Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. To stop the UConn Huskies. So uh, Tyler, I'm going to go to you first on this one. Give me a game plan, man. What do you have to do? How do you beat this UConn team? First of all, I want to say that UConn has been my favorite to win the tournament probably since they destroyed my heels. Uh, I, I think what you have to do is First of all, I think you have to be connected defensively. And, you know, the Iowa State team, they're, you know, you have to put a lot of ball pressure and you have to force them to make turnovers and you can't allow them to run their sets or dictate their style of play. UConn has a very, uh, you know, sophisticated offense. They're very fluid. They make teams guard them and a lot of cuts, a lot of off the ball movement. So you have to force pressure on the ball and force them to turn over. But also, I do think there has to be a little luck involved because I think UConn is such a good team. I think you have to shoot it lights out and you have to limit your turnovers and, you know, careless turnovers. So you have to be clicking on all cyl cylinders and have a little bit of luck, in my opinion. Sweeney? Look, like, to me, the the first thing is that Jaden Ladee has to get Donovan Klingon in foul trouble, right? Like, yes. he has to win that matchup because San Diego State can't score – like, if, if Ladee is silenced by Klingon, which, I mean, Klingon has dominated the rim in, in pretty much every game he's played, like, San Diego State's going to score 37 points and they lose by 20, right? Ladee is their offense. They need they need him to win that matchup. You start there. Um, San Diego State is physical and disruptive on the defensive end. They defend the three really, really well. Um, you know, you're going to have to contest and run them off the line and, and, and make UConn make tough twos. Uh, and, and then you have to hope that your other guys step up. San Diego State is not a good three-point shooting team, but they have guys who can make shots. Micah Parrish is 29% this year. He's a guy who can make shots. We saw that last year in the NCAA tournament. Uh, Reese, Reese Dixon Waters is a guy who can really make outside shots. Again, 33%, but like we know the history there. We know what he shot at USC. Like He is a guy who can make you know generate offense. We saw Darion Trammell last year in March make big shots and, and, and carry this team to the Final Four. They need that again, right? San Diego State has been... Very beatable this year when no one other than Ladee steps up. They've had a good chance to beat good teams when one other guy steps up. And they can beat anyone when multiple guys other than Jaden Ladee step up. They need big showings across the board to have a chance, chance against the Huskies. Yeah, so you guys nailed it. There's three things that you have to do to beat UConn, in my opinion. First one, blow up their sets. Don't let them run offense. You got that one, Tyler. Second one, get Donovan Klingon in foul trouble. You nailed that one, Sweeney. Um and the third one is you have to have an outlier shooting performance from beyond the arc. I think Creighton was like 15 for 29 or something like that. Kansas was nine for 14 when they beat UConn. And then the Seton Hall one was a little bit weird because uh, Donovan Klingon got injured, but like they just beat the hell out of them physically and just did not let them run anything that they wanted to run. And uh, those are the things that you have to do if you want to have a chance. Um, I think that with, uh, with Jay Ledee, that he that's actually a pretty good matchup for San Diego State if you want to try to get Kling into foul trouble. Liddy is a little bit more of a jump shooter than like a straight up low post back to the basket guy. And if you force Klingon to come out from away from the rim to like 15 feet, I think you got a chance to be able to get him off his feet on a pump fake or, or you know, have him uh be a little undisciplined defensively. Cause he has a he has a bad habit of of kind of committing some fouls when when he uh, probably shouldn't. So those are the three things you have to do. And even if you do that, it's still going to be it. <laughs> it's going to be a, a, a big ask. The one thing I would also add, Micah Parrish, you mentioned him, Sweeney, like that dude needs to go off because he kind of plays the four spot for him offensively, um, at least in their starting lineup. And uh, the way that you can kind of attack UConn's defense, which has had quite a bit of success in Big East play the last couple of years, is go at Alex Caravan. He's not the best one-on-one -on -one defender. Um, who... I don't think San Diego State is necessarily built for it. Is Illinois, is Iowa State, Tyler, do you think either of those teams, if they end up being matched up in the Elite Eight, like are either of those teams built for it? Because I kind of feel like Illinois is. I actually think Iowa State, and I think because Iowa State's kind of an older, uh, more veteran team, and also uh, they get out and really put a lot of defensive pressure on teams. Um would be my that that would be a team that I would look at that could give UConn a little bit of trouble. My only question with Illinois is, yeah, they have athletic guys. Terrence Shannon Jr. can really get it going, and he can be an explosive explosive scorer as he's shown. I, I just don't think they're connected defensively enough to really uh, give UConn those you know issues because 
UConn is so, you know, lethal offensively and they run their set so well. Yeah, you got to be locked in for 25 seconds and uh, asking some of those <laughs> Illinois guys to pay attention for 25 seconds might be a big ass, Sweeney. Yeah, look, like I, I think both teams have a have a shot because both teams are playing really well. They're both really confident. Look, I mean, I, I think everybody's kind of seen now the pictures of of it, like Brad Underwood and the staff like running in the locker room with super soakers. But like, like that whole like the the vibes around Illinois are really good right now, and, and I think a lot of like playing UConn right now is like you have to walk in there with the confidence that you can beat them, right? They feel so overwhelming. Like you're going to take a punch and how do you respond to that? Like, I, I think Illinois is, is equipped to do that and they have the scoring uh, to, to go point for point with UConn, right? I mean, you know, the ability that they can do, you know, that they can get downhill and, and, and force your defense to collapse and, and send two to the ball and then spray it and, and attack closeouts is, is really unique. But, but for Iowa state, like, if there's a defense that can disrupt UConn, it's it's that one. I mean, look, remember last year at PK eighty five, these teams played each other in the in the championship game, and like this game, that game wasn't close, but it also wasn't as much of a blowout as eighteen points suggested. Like I think that was a game with ten minutes to go, and UConn turned it over nineteen times in that game. Did not look very good. Iowa State just didn't have the offense. This year's Iowa State team is a much better offensive team than last year's, and I, I think that if Iowa state can keep UConn to 70 points and, and grind them out and turn them over 17, 18, 19 times and like let Taman lips, lipsy go make plays. They got a chance, right? Again, I don't think it, there, there is no easy recipe as Doster said, like you have to do three things and that's to give, to get you in the door. Uh, but I, I, I do think that both those teams have a real chance to knock off UConn if, if they get to that point. Yeah, can I just say for the record, Sweeney, like if Iowa State holds UConn to 70, they're kind of built like a team that would end up losing that game by 12. Like, <laughs> I, it, that's, I just don't like that matchup at all for Iowa State because uh, I, I think they'll be get. The Thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.